to one of War Thunder's training areas. Here, you will learn how to control your vehicle. Begin moving forward. right corner, you can see a mini-map, which shows your tank as an arrow. It also shows the position of your enemies and allies as icons. Your opponent this time, a training target, is the red icon on the map. Your allies' icons are blue. You can see several markers on the screen. The cursor, which the turret of your tank follows, the marker indicating the direction of the tank cannon, and the crosshairs that shows where the tank shell will hit. Take into consideration that the mouse aiming cursor is not a gun sight and only serves to help you turn the tank turret in the right direction. You should not shoot without waiting for the tank turret to align itself with the opponent. If you want to hit the en if you want to hit the enemy tank, wait for the turret to turn towards the opponent. Align the crosshair with the target. It will change color when it is over the opponent. And fire. Move the cursor over the indicator. Wait until the tank turret finishes rotating and the weapon sight to be aligned with the cursor. Switch to gunner view. You can use zoom to get a better view of the target. The aim assist indicator in the center of the screen shows where the shell will strike when you fire a shot. It turns red if the current shell cannot pierce the armor, yellow if it is possible to pierce, and green if your shell can easily pierce the armor. Depending on your target's armor thickness, the aim assist indicator changes to various colors. One of the best ways to destroy a tank is to put its crew out of action. Move the reticule over the central area of the tank. Now, fire at the fighting compartment on the tank. When a shell penetrates armor, the x-ray window appears in the top right corner. This shows which parts of the tank and which crew members took damage. The enemy tank is considered destroyed if it has no crew members remaining inside. Great! If there was any crew in this vehicle, they would be in big trouble. Now, switch to third-person view. Another effective way of destroying, or at least immobilizing a vehicle, most armored vehicles have their engines at the rear. Continue by moving the reticule onto the rear of the indicated tank. Now, switch to gunner view and fire at the tank engine. It serves him right. If the engine, ammo rack, or fuel tanks inside the tank are damaged, this may cause an explosion or start a fire. Good job. Move on to... Now, you have to complete a real combat assignment. Capture and hold a strategic point. You can see a marker above the capture point. If the marker is white, this means that the point is currently neutral. Move to the capture zone.
capture zone. The border... Your tank has reached the indicated point, but you can't capture the zone while it still has enemy vehicles in it. Destroy the enemy tank. second part of the tank battle tutorial. Please move to the route marker. As you may have noticed in battles against other players, enemy tank armor can be tough to penetrate. The tank in front of you has exactly this kind of armor. Aim your... This tank has its frontal armor facing you. This is the strongest part of a tank's armor, but you can still penetrate it whenever the aim assist indicator turns green. Find a weak point in the tank's armor and destroy it. On target! Some weak points in the frontal armor. Got it! Awesome! Now, move the reticule onto the other nearby tank. That enemy tank has very strong armor, which your current shells can't penetrate. The fact that the aim assist indicator turns red when hovering over any position on the tank shows this. Fire a few shots at the tank. The target hasn't taken any damage! As you can see, the shells we are using are useless against armor that is this strong. So, we should switch to another type. To understand how effective different shells are in different situations, you need to look at the icon of the shell. The icon shows both the type and armor penetration of the shell, as well as the additional damage it causes. If you compare the two types of shell that your tank is equipped with, you can see that the currently selected shell causes more damage. However, this will not help us to destroy the tank if we cannot penetrate its armor. Now, look at the armor penetration of the shells. The second type of shell can penetrate far stronger armor. Even though the first type of shell causes more damage, it would not be effective in this situation. So, shells with better armor penetration should be used. Switch to the alternative shell type available. Load hyper shell! Fire off your current shell to load the new type of shell that you've switched to. We 
failed to acquire a target. You have switched to composite shells. These shells successfully pierce almost any armor, but they cause lower damage. Yes! Target! Destroy the target tank. The gun! Now you can see that even though the composite shells make it possible to destroy a well-armored target, it takes quite a long time because of their low damage. Good job. Move to another Kabanir. Shooting at long distances, you need to take into consideration that shells do not fly straight, but follow a parabolic path into account, meaning that they will fall to the ground once they pass a certain distance. For the shell to reach a distant target, the cannon should have a higher elevation. Accordingly, when you aim the targeting crosshair in sniper mode, or when the cannon orientation marker points towards the target, you will not be able to hit it. The shell will fall without reaching the opponent. To hit the opponent, no matter how far away they are, move the white crosshair onto them. It changes color when it is over the enemy. And fire. your target, switch to gunner mode. The fired shell flies along a ballistic trajectory, while the reticule shows where the cannon is aiming. If you shoot at a distant object using the reticule, the shell will drop before it reaches the target. It serves him right! Nice shot! On target! Ready? Great job! You won. Now you're a true tanker.